Thank you for joining us and a very happy Easter to you, wherever you are listening to this podcast by St. Catherine's Church in Ventnor for this Easter Sunday. And before we have our first song, which is Jesus Christ is Risen Today, please join me as we say together, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. My dear friends, we've been living strangely reduced and cut off lives in the last few weeks, haven't we? Most of the people I speak to aren't complaining, for we live in a beautiful place and the weather has been lovely with many people speaking of the kindness of neighbours, friends and strangers to provide their everyday needs. Yet we humans are made for the use of five senses, and at the moment that is not possible. We may be enjoying long phone calls, but wish we could see the person we're speaking to. We may see and hear people on the computer screen or the phone, but wish we could hug them. It would be nice to come closer to people again. Something has been lost for the moment. Mary Magdalene had lost not something but someone, her friend Jesus, whom she had seen die in a horrible way two days beforehand. The other Gospels, though not John, tells us that she and others employed their sense of smell 
by bringing aromatic spices to counteract the stench of a decaying body. Yet she wasn't expecting to see him with her eyes, which is why when a man appeared by the tomb, she thought it was a gardener. In her case, seeing wasn't believing. Yet when this gardener spoke her name, something stirred in her heart. Mary, Jesus said, and she answered, Rabbi, my master. At this point, she wanted to touch, to hold Jesus. But just like us at the moment, she could not. Yet this prohibition had nothing to do with the sinister power of infection, but held a promise within it. Do not hold me, says Jesus, because that would be to hold on to the old me, the me who could only be in one place at a time, the me who would grow old and die and decay, just as Mary was expecting him to. I have not yet ascended to the Father, Jesus says, but when I do, all that will be past. Jesus asks, is asking Mary to reach out to him, with the sixth sense of faith with which we can believe that death is not the end, but the beginning of something completely new. How we need to believe this today. Our world is ravaged by the coronavirus pandemic, which is a terrible thing, but in truth it has seen this before, but far, far worse. In the 14th century it is reckoned that 30 to 60 percent of Europe's population was wiped out in a plague called the Black Death. In that time there lived and somehow survived a woman in Norwich who became known as Mother Julian after the church where she lived voluntarily isolated from everyone else as a hermit praying to God for direction. Over a period of time God gave her a series of visions known as the revelations of divine love. One of the most memorable of these revelations contained these words, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. We are surrounded by bad news of death and decay and isolation at the moment, just as Mary was that first Easter morning. Yet when she heard her name spoken, she heard the whisper that spring is the last true thing and that triumph is born of tears. Jesus is risen. However we feel this morning, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. A happy Easter to you all. Amen. Risen Lord Jesus, we come into your presence on this Easter Sunday morning amidst all the sadness and worry of the coronavirus, yet with our hearts full of praise, because you are risen, risen indeed. Help us, Father, although separated by space, to be united in a spirit of joy. May we redirect our focus from ourselves to you. Thank you, Jesus, for experiencing life here on earth so that you might know and experience our worries and share in our sorrows and joys. Today we celebrate a day of joy when the despair and darkness of the tomb was turned upside down. You were deserted by your friends in the Garden of Gethsemane and even asked your father that this experience of crucifixion be taken away. But as the darkness of night is followed by the morning, so you conquered death and rose to new life. We pray that your new life may be reflected in our lives. 
Forgive us for the times when we are absorbed by our own wants and needs and fill us with your heart of love. Finally, Lord, we place into your care all those who are suffering or bereaved, particularly at this time of the coronavirus. We thank you for those who are sacrificing their safety to care for others and those who are continuing to bring us services such as dustmen, supermarket workers, delivery drivers and postmen. As we celebrate your gift of love, we say these words together. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou, o'er death, has won. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this Easter and always. <laughs>